We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. Well, a very good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to a cool, chilly, very breezy, cold evening. What? You know, for some reason, I'm not. I'm getting, I'm getting looks up here that I've lost my mind. It is a balmy, hot, sweaty September second night here in 2022. This is the Current High Network live exclusive coverage of high school activities in the Current High School District tonight. It's athletics. It's football. We are at. Golden Hawk Stadium, Centennial Golden Hawks in your screen on your screen. On the red top, the number 33. Brown bottoms, factory C for your Golden mustard Hawks. Mustard bottoms and they're number welcoming one, in number 13. A team Hawks. last year that had a phenomenal season, the Independence Falcons, White Tops, Maroon Bottoms. I'm Vance Palm joined as always by my longtime partner, Coach Rich Cornford, Julian Wilson to our left, our director producer. And Stan Green here tonight from the high school district down on the goal line on the south side. This is going to be a great, great football game. Again, welcome to the Curtin High Network. Vance Palmer, Rich Cornford. We're at Centennial with the Golden Hawks. Welcoming in the Independence Falcons. Going to be a great one. Coach, good evening. Your early thoughts on this. Well, both teams had great quarterback play last year, but both of those guys are gone. LaDon Denmark and Levi Manning have, have moved on. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see which of these younger quarterbacks steps up and, and really fills that role off of two very successful programs. Centennial will have the football first. It's taken at the 10-yard line. We've got a big crowd here tonight, a really big crowd here tonight, a wild crowd, a raucous crowd. So right below us, the student section, and um, the band not far off. It's going to be a fun, fun night here. Coach, last week we were over at uh, Golden Valley. More on that a little bit later. We can take some time to talk about that game. But tonight you've got the great Santiago lined up pretty much wherever he wants to go. He can kind of go where he wants to go on this offense. Now he's kind of tucked in here tight. But we're talking about jersey number nine and Jackson Santiago. I expect they'll go to him early and often. I sure would. I mean, he's a man amongst boys. Might be the best football player in town. Certainly probably the best two-way player in town. They're looking for him right away. We say it, they do it. And just like that, <laughs> that's why we're such great broadcasters, Rich. That's why we get paid the huge, huge dollars from the current high school district. Nice young quarterback, and he throws to the best player in the city. But that's easy pickings. Yeah, sm smart play there, right? <laughs> uh, you know, six foot three. 200 plus pound wide receiver that can fly uh got the bloodlines you know his dad Hernan santiago was a stud played in the pac-12 the washington huskies and uh he's got several offers already as just a junior before he was a washington husky my friend he was an arvin bear thank you saw Hernan outside the freight train he was the freight train was on a golf cart he was hustling off somewhere i said big man vp see you in a while so that's his son braxton santiago and he is Bright future ahead of him, but let's not be fooled by just one player. This Centennial Golden Hawks team has a lot to offer, and and having Mike chat with Coach Sturet, he said, "Hey, look, we got a, lost our great quarterback, but now we have a young quarterback. And he gets rid of the ball so quick, he doesn't hang on to it. Zero sacks so far this year. Right on, uh, like sixty something attempts. So very impressive. I know Sturet was." Uh, really impressed with his offensive line play. They've got two tackles that are 6'5", 6'6". Now, one of them is out this week. 
But, uh, you know, they've, they've got all the pickings of a top-notch uh, team here in the Valley. First and 10 already at the Independence 39-yard line. A nice toss. Oh, just overthrows him. And by the way, we're talking about Adam Copas. Copas is the quarterback, by the way. Had a nice talk with head coach Tyler Schilhawel just a few moments ago before kickoff. And I was listening to him kind of talk to his defensive backs for a couple of minutes and just kind of go over a couple of things. And Tyler's always got that super serious look in his eyes. He And I asked him, any kind of a hangover from last year? He goes, no, nope, we enjoyed it, but came ready to go this summer. So when you mentioned last year, they won nine games after losing their first six. I know, it's crazy. I mean, a remarkable job by him to keep that team together and really get hot at the right time. On a second and 10, Copas fires, and it is caught at the 26-yard line. No, they're going to say he bobbled it and dropped it. Incomplete. It was intended out there for Trenton Hernandez, so... He's second and ten. All right, Centennial with their no huddle look. Star likes to get a look at the defense, make his calls. It's not necessarily a real fast-paced, high-tempo no huddle, but they do get on the line and stress the defense. And they made him jump for the second time tonight. So now, right now, I'm thinking this is four-down territory. Now that they've got it into a manageable third and five here. Opens up your entire playbook, run or pass. From the Independence, Independence 33. And again, for Independence, they're always going to need to know where Santiago is. And Centennial does a good job of moving around. Right now, he's the widest receiver to the right. And uh, he's isolated one-on-one. -on -one. Third and five. They look back over to the sidelines here for just a second. They stay on the ground with it. Independent saying nothing doing here. And nice job. Really good job by the Independent's defense there. Plugging that middle up. We've talked up the, the Centennial offensive line. They're 2-0 and right now. This is their first home game of the season after traveling to Visalia to Redwood, um, who they beat by a score. And then they went to the coast and beat a good Royal Grande squad handily. A couple of 300-plus yard games for this young quarterback in Copas. So, yeah, very, a, a well-balanced attack. They protect him well. He's got some really good receivers out there. We've already talked about Santiago, obviously. Um, but he's got a couple other guys out there that have gone and caught the ball real well. Fourth and four. Copas drops back, throws one, and it is broken up. Hey, what a nice play out there. A really strong defensive play by Jonathan Rico. Santiago goes into incomplete. Rico, like a glove on Santiago, so... On a fourth and four, Indy holds. We'll get to see their offense. Once again, everybody, welcome. Great to have you with us. I'm Vance Palm with Rich Cornford and Julian Wilson to our left, running all things technical tonight. Anne Marie to our right. She is the video footage coordinator for the Centennial Golden Hawks, a junior here at Centennial. Nice to have Anne Marie up next to us. First and 10 for the Falcons. 12, Diego Hernandez in on for quarterback for Independence. Diego Hernandez, one of two options for quarterback. And they start off on the ground. Nice delayed move there by Richard Gooden. Gooden able to just avoid one big hit and actually picked up three or four yards. You know, they have um, Diego Hernandez, but they also have Prince Ellis. They have some options back there, Coach. So if you remember, Prince Ellis is the brother of King Ellis, who was the uh, county player of the year a couple years back at South. Uh, sure Prince, Prince is a younger brother, but Prince is, I think, dealing with an ankle injury, so I do not know if we'll see him tonight. Second and seven. On the ground they stay. Oh, goodness. What a nice big run. Decent tackle at the end, but a booming, thunderous hit by the running back. So nice start for Independence here. They're in convertible third down situation, staying ahead of the chains. A uh, couple run plays here. What we know about Diego Hernandez is he is just a sophomore, but he is also a sprinter on the track team. So, though he may not be quite as quick as Prince, he's, if he gets in the open field, he's gone. Hernandez has it, looks, and he actually takes a big hit, but I think he got past the marker and picked up the first down. Took a hit from Santiago Hernandez and from Forbes, but I think he got it, Coach. Yeah. So, good response to, by the Independence offense after their defense got a critical stop on the first drive. 
controlling the ball, moving the chains. That's how they ended up making it to the Division IV state finals last year. Spreading things out on a first and 10. Balls at their own 44-yard line. Looks right the whole way. Tosses one out here, and it's caught by Miguel Angel Villarreal. Really sharp-looking pass, Coach. Yeah, very, very smooth-looking. Independence, you know, they had a bye last week after uh, winning their first game 7 to nothing over Pioneer Valley in Santa Maria. Uh, but they, they put that practice time to good use. This Centennial defense has been playing really, really well all season. They got a couple defensive ends that are great run stuffers. They got Santiago in the secondary, along with a couple other monsters back there. Second and one, Rico in motion behind for a second. Thought about the option, saw a gap, a small gap, kept it on the option, and I think he picked up another one. It is. Well, the announcer said it, and they're going to move the chain. So, tell you what. Hernandez making some good decisions here early, Coach. Yeah, and it's important for a young quarterback to realize that not every play has to be a touchdown, right? You, you want to be nice and consistent, keep possession of that football, especially run the option. Sometimes they can be a little bit scary. To the left side, balls on the ground. Looks like Centennial came up with it. Fumble! Centennial ball pops out and it's picked up just like that. The, the Falcons were moving down the field. They looked good. Everything was going well. And then the dreaded turnover for Independence and Centennial gets the ball at their own 44 yard line. So mark it at 749 in the first quarter, first turnover. Now, a lot of times after a sudden change like that, teams will go for the home run ball. We saw Centennial, their first drive, throw it deep to Jackson, um, anxious to see if they try it again. They've got one-on-one -on -one coverage down here. First and 10. They keep it on the ground. They just... Bull ahead, how about that? And the Number big four, fella, Jackson Andrew Salas, the junior were being brought down. left tackle, Number jersey number 71. And he just moved three or four guys Second down and five from in his way. A couple of steps here, a couple of steps there, and there are three Falcons getting shoved back. So Independence is not flipping their corners. They're letting whoever's on that side cover Santiago. Second and six, has Santiago on the back corner, and it's right on the money. It's caught. And I'll tell you what, even as good as Jackson Santiago is when the ball's that perfectly thrown, <laughs> that's a can of corn, Ferd. Haha. <laughs> nice little smash route concept there. They Again, they're moving Santiago around. He's been on the right side. He's been on the left side. He's been in the slot. There he ran from the slot. Ran that deep corner route and a perfect throw there. Gives them a first down, 25 yard line. First and 10. I'm gonna dip below the seven minute mark here in nine seconds and another aggressive defensive effort cost them five yards. They're just not able to pick up on Adam Copas's really sharp hard count. I think if I was independent, I'd buy some earplugs for my defensive lineman. Defense has got to play with their eyes, not with their ears there. Is that maybe a future investment for Del Oro? Or, <laughs> you know? Are yeah, you it might it, be. Like, giving away your secrets? We try to work on that a lot. I imagine. Don't give them those free five. First and five. They stay on the ground with it, and that's a big, big run right there by Jackson McDonald. So there is a Jackson and a Jackson. So those chains are moving now for Centennial, taking advantage of that good field position. First and 10, ball at the Independence 14-yard line. It's been a great first quarter. A lot of action, a lot of activity. The one turnover by the Falcons is the bigger story in the first quarter. They stay on the ground, and again, it's given to McDonald. McDonald up to about the nine-yard line. Centennial offensive line giving them a pretty good push up front there, running right between the tackles. Got some rather large boys up front there.
We're in the first quarter, no score yet. 6-17 and counting. Golden Hawks taking their time. Coach Starrett just fine, just being methodical. No need, no need to get antsy here. And they stay on the ground. They give it to a new back that may be Boyd. Thought I saw number 11. It is. All right, Independence did a great job last time when they were in the third and uh, medium and then fourth down. They're going to need to keep that up here. Huge play this early in the game. Always know where Santiago is. Right now he's split to the right side. Way out on the very, very top of your screen by the down marker, by the third down marker. And then you've got Forbes and Hoagie over here as decoys. Maybe. No, they're looking that way the entire time. They throw it in the corner. Oh, what a nice path. A lot of traffic over there, Coach. Hoagie was right there standing there as a cut from all the way across the field from Trenton Hernandez. There was a few bodies over there. Looks like Centennial's going to go for it here on fourth down. I'd watch for another hard count. You've got him to jump three times already. And that would put the ball, if they were successful, on the three-yard line. It'd be a first and goal from the three. Let's see if he goes with a hard count again. It's worth a shot. Copas. He's still oh, close. Oh, did he? Oh, they got they him. the flag. They threw, that was really close. I didn't know if they got him. It was just movement there, but they did get him. And even our director, Julian, looked over and said, wow. Yeah, four times in one quarter. So the, the key in high school football is all that guy has to do is break the plane of the ball. It's not like the NFL where they can get back, you know, once they've, they've jumped. And he so. must have. All right, looks like Centennial's putting some big bodies in the game here. First and goal from about the three. Well, they got it. So it's first and goal from, as Coach just mentioned, inside the five. They go on the ground, and this time is no challenge there. Jackson McDonald just well, ran over some guys. That formation brought back memories of Jan Stubbe over here when this school just <laughs> opened and was an immediate powerhouse. That offensive line of theirs. Oh, they had huge linemen and uh, Jacob Stubbe and uh, Andrew Stubbe running the ball, you know, just pounding that isolation play. We were on the wrong side of that for a <laughs> while there at West. And then they continued year after year. They had the Houston brothers and Mer Brent Morrell and they just had uh, some great, great players. Here comes the PAT by Eugenio Hernandez. Oh, and he hits the right, the right side, right. side and the upright moves it towards the long jump pit. How about that? All right, well, Centennial certainly took advantage of that, uh, of the turnover, and then also of some undisciplined play defensively. They got 20 yards, uh, well, 15 on this particular drive off of... Uh, People jumping off sides. Six nothing to score. We're at the 516 mark left here in this first quarter. This is the Kern High Network. Pleasure to have everybody with us. We're at Centennial High School tonight. It's a great one. And the snack bar is sending a wafting, desirable aroma all the way up here. Rich is heading down at halftime to buy the whole <laughs> the whole press box. We don't have Kyle Wiley here, do we? It's a great atmosphere tonight. Centennial just packed it out down below. Just packed it out below. And Independence has a nice crowd as well. Yeah, Centennial's always done a nice job supporting their, their football teams here. What did they open, I think, in 1995? Uh, maybe, maybe 1993, I think, actually. A bit of trivia for you. Davion... Leon, number 10, just a sophomore on this independent squad. He's nephew of the great Matt Alvarez. Renegades tomorrow. Wow, there we go. Renegades have their opening kickoff tomorrow. It's been moved to 7 p.m. if you're going up the hill tomorrow. It's not a 6 o'clocker. It's a 7 o'clocker. I'd be there if I wasn't going to the coast. I'm getting out of this heat, man. <laughs> going to Lompoc. Well, Rich, it's your neck of the woods, so you really can't be called, uh, you know, you can't be called a slacker for not going to see the Renegades. I will be up there. I'm going to be on the 
down on the turf watching those renegades. I want to see Joseph Campbell do his deal. Those Campbell boys can play some ball. He's starting QB tomorrow night. Okay, 6 nothing. After a bit of a delay, Centennial will be kicking off, and it's up in the air. And it's, and it's going to be Richard Gooden. Gooden takes it at the 5. Gooden looking. Gooden up in it at the 25. A nice tackle. Nice hit. Great tackle there. Covering that, those kickoffs. He hit him, and he popped up pretty quick. Trying to get that 25, number. I believe. Is that Giovanni Rivera? What a nice hit by Rivera, the junior linebacker. He upended Gooden. So Independence was moving the ball well. They were doing a nice job in their first series, but they turned it over at the 749 mark. So they've been without the football long enough for the Golden Hawks to get in the end zone. Here we go again. And boy, that's a nice start right there. They put the ball in Gooden's hands, and he picks up seven right away. Yeah, it'll be interesting as this game goes on with the, the heat the way it is, how many two-way players Independence has. I know Centennial only has one. That's Santiago. So that's a huge advantage. A lot of these teams that are playing people both ways in this, this heat, you start seeing them cramp up in the second, third, and fourth quarter. And a seven-yard first down is always nice, Coach, always. The option, they keep it, and this time the defense just read it perfectly. What a great job by the coaching staff. They called that out, and they said this is an option QB. And he likes to keep it. We've got Austin Davis, offensive lineman for Independence, hobbling off there. Might have twisted an ankle. Well, Ethan Eccles checking into the game. And by the way, this is the son of the legendary, iconic Fred Eccles, one of the all-time great CSUB basketball players and one of my all-time favorite roadrunners. He is in the Venice Beach Hall of Fame, Fred Eccles. And that's like the likes of Kobe and the boys. Wow. And number 22, his son, Ethan Eccles. All right, Coach the backfield. <clears throat> Going to have a dilemma here. They didn't get that first down there. It's going to be fourth and short. Centennial's short. defense has really stepped up these last two plays five. after Independence initially had some success running the ball on him. Fourth and one. What will Coach Tyler Shellhobble do? <clears throat> Early in the season last year when Independence was struggling, they had all kinds of trouble uh, with their kicking game, both field goals and, and punts. So I'm anxious to see if they've, they've got that figured out this year. I know by the end of last year they certainly did. I think there's still one guy short on this coverage unit here. I count 10, and, and they've got to burn a timeout. The dangerous Noe Estrada was waiting back there. We will take a short time out as well. We'll take a, just a quick breather. We'll be back. 310 left in this first quarter. 6 nothing Centennial on the Current High Network. All right, back to fourth and one, Independence punting. Nice high punt. And it bounces out on the track. So it'll be first and 10, Centennial, with 3.03 left here in the first. Anxious to see where they mark that. Looked like a little bit over about a 25-yard net on that punt. All right, Golden Hawks, nice drive. They, they threw the ball well, ran the ball well, and took advantage of several Miscues by Independence to march about 50 yards down the field. They got good field position right now at their own 42. Our man Kenny Calvin out in God's country tonight, the Garden in the Sun, calling the Arvin Kern Valley game. He's already checked in to remind me how beautiful it is in my hometown. Thank you, KC. Across the middle, 
and they find their superstar, Jackson Santiago. I listened to an interview two days ago. Greg Kerr's show, you had Jackson on there. And by the way, it's spelled J-A-X-T-O-N, everyone. As I mentioned earlier, they do have a Jackson McDonald, S-O-N, S-O-N. But, you know, just listening to a young man like Santiago, he just knows what to say, how to say it, when to say it, always giving his team the credit, always deflecting, always saying all the right things. And it, it goes along with having, you know, a mom and a dad like that. But he, he also knows, look, I got a great team behind me here. We're poised for some good things. He's a 4.0 student, so that tells you a lot right there. Well, he got all that from his mom, guaranteed. <laughs> How about this? Overthrown, very dangerous. I I've told Hernan Google. a few times, look, he probably got your height, but he got his mom's looks and brains, and he says, no doubt, brother, no doubt. All right, second time we've seen Centennial run that all-seams concept where four guys go deep. And second time we've seen Independence cover it extremely well. You're right. It almost looks like an errant throw, just nothing there. And Copas able to just kind of put it out in the flatland. Second and 10, 236 remaining here in this first quarter. 6 nothing Centennial. Looks, has a lot of time. And it's a little bit of a mix-up there at the 30-yard line, but no flags, zero flags. That independent secondary holding up pretty well against this team that, you know, threw for 616 yards in their first two games. Right. Um, right now they're holding them to right at about 50% completions. Big third down here for both teams. Haven't seen a whole lot of stunning from independence. They've, they've stayed mostly in that zone so far. We'll see if they bring a little pressure here. Copas looks back over here. All right, Independence did not jump off sides that time. So that was a, they tried the hard count, didn't get them. So that's a win. Action in the backfield, everybody spreading out. Copas back there by himself, third and 10. Looks left, screen play across the middle, connects out there to Rubel. And he is stopped. Fumble, ball's on the ground. Centennial very fortunate to get that back. It was a well set up screen, but Independence did a great job of rallying to the football. And is going to bring up a fourth and five for Centennial. Almost about the same spot the first drive of the game. <laughs> Centennial went for it on fourth and five. And that ball popped up. That thing was five, six feet off the ground. You could see it from here. So, yep. as coach said, fourth and six. Ball's at the Independence 41 yard line. Centennial doing a good job of mixing up formations. Stressing the defense. Hard count again. Nobody jumps. So oh. I wonder if somebody on Centennial flinched that time. Maybe. And you look at the Independence guys clapping their hands. All of a sudden it goes to fourth and 11. And, boy, you got to hand it to Coach Schilhobel and his staff, Coach Gosbrich Latrell, his brother David Schilhobel, Gabriel, Gabriel, uh, Gilbert Varela. In a very short span of time, in less than 12 minutes, they were able to get inside those defensive guys' heads and say, fellas, stop uh -huh. it, stop it. Not only that, Centennial stubs their own toe. They've got a punt. Impressive. Yep, making adjustments, calming these guys down. Anthony Rico back to return the punt, and it's heads a dangerous up. one. Did, did it hit, hit him? him? Did it hit him in the back? I think it did. Oh, my gosh. It took a crazy bounce and hit him in the back. That ball bounces funny. You know, it's a it's a funny-shaped ball. you got to oh be careful. Oh, my gosh. He, he had made an aggressive move towards it as if he might try to just take it on the run. And if I could read his mind, he saw it taking a nosedive and said, no, nope, can't do that. But then it takes the funky bounce that only a football can take, and it got him in the back. And Centennial, with their great coverage, they saw that. And, oh, boy, two tough breaks. Three, really. The fumble earlier didn't get this fumble right here that they had a shot at. And then this tough, tough, tough situation where the ball takes a football bounce and gets him in behind him and gets him in the back. Wow. First and goal from the 10-yard line. First and goal from the 10 Independence has a lot of guys out close to the line of scrimmage here in the, this red zone defense. Playing with a big cushion down here at the bottom. 
Copas looks to his left, has a ton of time, steps up, guns it, and it's a touchdown. Well, Kern County, there you have it. We can keep talking about him, or you can just watch what he does. And how about the, the coverage? I mean, the, the, the line protection and Copas stepping right up in there and throwing a dart in, in Santiago just doesn't stop his route. That's beautiful. Well, this is a, a centennial team that likes to throw the ball. And, man, you give a good quarterback that much time, find an open man crossing the middle. Uh, again, Centennial taking advantage of miscues by independence. Eugenio Hernandez. Oh, bobble. Can he get it up? So the first one hits wow. the right upright. The second, they had to stall it and knock it in, and they got it to go. So Eugene gets the PAT, and that was sketchy. But Coach Cornford, if you're if you're just getting to Kern High Network tonight, and you see 13 to nothing in the first quarter. It doesn't belie the entire story, does it? No. Centennial taking advantage of a good field position there, getting that ball at the 10, and and you know a couple Independence turnovers. So. Um, you know, Independence has moved the ball decently well offensively, but uh, turned the ball over on one fumble, and then they got a great stop defensively only to have the punt hit their punt returner. So Independence is going to need something positive to happen. They're, they're plenty capable of it, but they cannot let this game get, get out of hand because they're not a team that's going to look to throw the ball, you know, 40 times to, to get caught up. They need to be able to stay balanced. Number three, Rico. So that's the story of the first quarter so far. There's still 76 seconds left in it, but it's 13 to nothing Centennial. They have capitalized on the miscues, and how important is that? Miscues can happen, but some teams don't capitalize, and this time they did. Last time Centennial had great kickoff coverage. This one floats, and it's taken by Gooden at the sideline. Gooden looking for something. He jumps over, hops over, and that looked nice. That's a beautiful look. That's a solid return there, getting the ball out past the 25-yard line. Good kick into the corner, good coverage, but great job getting every yard they could on the return. Got a score update here. I got uh, one minute left in the first, 6-6, six to six, Stockdale and Ridgeview. Okay. My son keeping track of that game. And then Lompoc 55, Cabrillo, our arch rival zero. My dad keeping track of that game for me. Because we were getting a lot of texts. You, <laughs> you, you guys have the Lompoc score yet? Okay, here we go. One, boom, boom, ball's on the ground. Oh, no way. Oh, we're already seeing Golden Hawks saying it's their football. And if that's the case, it is wow. going to be treacherous goings from here and Tanner Forbus now comes off the sideline so well I don't know who you are or care who you are or what it's like out there no matter who you are playing and coaching all of a sudden you're in a deep deep hole yeah you, you've got to take care of the football and option football is a little bit more dangerous uh, and you got a sophomore quarterback there. Not exactly sure when that ball popped out, if it was on the exchange or just just afterwards. But Centennial, man, they have got a boatload of momentum right now. Now, Coach, I really do think Copas will take a shot. But, and, yeah, and that look, keep the gas on. Got look, gas pedal down. There's nobody in the backfield with them. At this time, I do think that Coach well, Starrett There's nobody it. covering the guys on the bottom. Oh, yeah, they had to call they a timeout. Called timeout. They had to. They had to. So this is a bit of a disadvantage. Again, Independence opened two weeks ago, played a game, and then had their bye week. So they have only had one week of work, and, you know, sometimes uh, with the heat the way it is, you have to change and alternate your practice times. And um, they just, boy, offensively, putting the ball on the ground is a killer twice now in the first quarter, fumbles, and then they, the one was just mostly an unfortunate uh, accident there on the, on the muff punt. But... The fumbles are avoidable. And, again, if you're just scrolling over to Kern High Network, and this is the game you wanted to see tonight, a lot of people wanted to see this game. And it's started off great, other than the fact that Independence has himself in a big, big hole, and Coach Schill hobbles over there, full team timeout. The entire team huddled around. And it wasn't just X's and O's, was it, Coach? No. The, the Falcons are playing the Golden Hawks pretty even in the trenches. 
but uh, you know the, it's the skill position players need to come through for the gold or the the Falcons here. So Battle of the Birds is taking a turn for the worst for the Falcons. Again, they come right back out and spread everybody out. Santiago in the slot. Copas looks, throws, no, he pulls it back in, and it's dropped out here. So that's a plus for Independence. Copas seemed to have a good understanding, though, of the time he has in the pocket there. He, he stood in there pretty confidently, looked at his main receiver, um, running a streak down the field, and then checked down, just didn't quite set his feet well enough to make a great throw. But he looks very confident behind his offensive line, who's, again, protecting him very well. Second and 10. We didn't get heights and weights on these guys, but that centennial offensive line looks like it averages about 270 across the front. There's some big corn-fed boys there. Silas Aikens, the senior center. Across the middle, and it's to Santiago. Santiago makes one beautiful move. And that's his second touchdown of the evening, and all of a sudden, it's 19-0. Yeah, boy, again, he, he's just a, a terrible matchup problem. And, and really, in my opinion, you know when a guy is a Division I caliber player when you have to adjust your whole game plan to him. And you clearly have to do that with, with Jackson because he's too big, too strong, too fast for your typical defender to cover. Okay, Hernandez, one for two tonight, P PATs. Let's see this. Whoa, Doink. gosh. And this is a low burner, a two iron off the crossbar. So two, one for three. Well, he's two out of three hitting the crossbar, <laughs> or the upright, sorry. Right. Um, he hit the right one the first time, and then the left one the third time. And then when he had a bad snap and no rhythm, he made it through. So adventures in kicking with the Centennial Golden Hawks. We've got a, we've got a Golden Hawk down for the sec for uh, just a moment here. We'll take a short break. We'll step away. 52 seconds left in the first, 19-0 Centennial here on the Kern 9 Network. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. Julian Wilson, our director, producer, our on-site boss. He's a mean one, too. He's a, he's, uh -huh. he's, look, he's not a nice guy to work for, but we try to just get through it. It's 19-0. All right, now, uh, Independence is lined up 20 yards off the football here. Number one, Noah is shot. I don't, for the Golden Hawks. I don't know if that is on purpose, but I would snub a short one here. Estrada. Go ahead and hammers one. This might go out of bounds, and it does. So on top of everything else, Rich, goes out of bounds. on top of everything else, it goes out of bounds. And I see the Centennial Golden. I see the coaching staff, and they're kind of pointing at it, the same thing, like, hey, man. All right. Like Down 19 nothing in the first right? quarter is not where you want to be. Um, but that being said, if you, if you watch the Fresno State Cal Poly game last night, Cal Poly was down 21 nothing. came back and really controlled the second quarter of that game, got themselves back in it, struggled in the red zone a little bit, but uh, it is still possible to, to do it. They're going to make him re-kick. Okay. Now I think the Independence guys are, are lined up a little bit more correctly. They've moved up. I've never seen a team line up with everybody 20 yards off the ball before. Coldhouse will be kicking off from the 35-yard line now. So 
So my brother is up at Hume Lake watching us over there. Oh, is it a camp? Yeah, he he's on the board for the Hume Lake Christian Camp up there and has a cabin up there. Nice enough to let me and my grandkids stay there a couple weeks ago. That was a blast. Beautiful place. Oh, a life-changing place, literally. Literally. Literally a life-changing place. What's your brother's first name? Tom. Tom. Hello, buddy. Great he's to have a, you. He's a counselor here at Centennial. Oh, that's right. Okay. That's right. Got it. Okay, here we go. There's a better kick. Prius. Rico on the return. Oh, he's got some space oh, there. Oh, to the outside. Gets out to about the 31 yard line before being pushed out of bounds. 45 seconds. Golden Hawks up 19. Three scores, two missed PATs, two of the scores. Well, all three scores are based on uh, capitalizations, right? Yeah. All three scores off of Falcons. All right, so Independence coming out here. They have to stay on schedule here. They can't try to press. Just keep running your offense. There's a little counter play. Got some room up along the left side. Rico again. On the carry. Ran out of bounds by number 12. Yeah, you know, there. Coach, you mentioned Cal Poly fighting back in the second quarter last night. In the third quarter, the kickoff of the second half, Independence will get the football. So, you know, kind of thinking ahead here, looking ahead, you know, we want to drain these 39 seconds of this first quarter and then just kind of get back in this thing and keep plodding along. Keep the ball out of the Golden Hawks' hands if they can. Look Again, to try to get it into Rico's hands a little bit more because he is the spark that really can ignite him. Anaya in motion. There's the kick. It's out here to the near side. Can he get outside? And drug out of bounds. And whoa, an awfully late hit, but no call. They let it ride. Let it ride. Noe Estrada with good closing speed there. Well, we've called Estrada's name already a lot last year as a sophomore. Short of the first down, make it well, this entire one. secondary, I believe, is returning for Centennial. So one of the strengths of their team, and not just in the pass game. That was great run support there. And obviously, we we talk a lot about Jackson Santiago, but the way he can cover sideline to sideline and you know make tackles for a loss from his safety position is, is pretty amazing. Right, that's, that's the end of the uh, first, quarter. first quarter, and as we mentioned, it's 19 nothing. We'll be back right after this on the Kern High Network. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. Critical. Critical third and short here. It's very start of the second quarter for the Independence Falcons. They have been consistently running the ball uh, pretty well inside. They've struggled a little bit when they try to go wide. So I, I would expect them to not mess around and just go right at the heart of the Golden Hawk defense. Hernandez has two backs hovering around him. High snap and a bump oh, no. falls on the ground. Oh. Hernandez is fighting for it, but I think he's in for a losing battle. Oh my we gosh. So to start off the second quarter on the third and one, it was a high snap, and Hernandez had to go up to get it. And I don't think anyone either side would have scripted four turnovers in the first 12 minutes yeah that that's that's just rough as a coach when you just can't take care of the football 
and it's the you know basic thing snaps and exchanges here all right golden hawks they've got a great chance to potentially almost put this game away yeah i mean you took the words right out of my brain or i whatever it's this is this thing could get for as good of a football team as independence is it could be over here soon wow yeah defense has been on the field an awful lot here that's a great point by our director the falcons defense has been out there a long time now you got jackson santiago down here on the right the second receiver Independence is a little confused with their coverage right now. They go upstairs, and it's Santiago, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 30-yard well, line by Prince Santiago Ellis. So Ellis is out there on the field in defense, but, you know, hats off to Adam Copas. Goodness, what an arm. Yeah, great timing on that throw. And again, now, now he's thrown for well over 700 yards and has not been sacked, and he's not been touched yet tonight. So that Centennial offensive line, we talk a lot about some of their skill players, but that Centennial offensive line is taking care of business up front. It's defensive holding declined. Holding up the Falcon, penalty is declined. Centennial will take the result of the play. So it's 19 nothing. If you're just getting to the Kern High Network, four turnovers by the Falcons in the first 12 minutes. We say 12 minutes because it was the first play of the third quarter, their third fumble. And they had a ball bounce off the back of the punt return man on a funky bounce. Only thing to bounce their way so far has been those extra points of Centennials that have bounced off the uprights. Yeah, wait a minute. They, they did take the penalty. Okay. Ball At first they declined it. Yard line. I was thinking I he really likes second and short. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't quite sure why, but they had a meeting in the mind. Say, whoa, 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 whoa. We, we, we'll, we'll take it again. First and 10. Ball is at the Independence 27 yard line. And nice it's a nice give, and it's a power run over to the right side, and a That's nice, cool. strong run by Jackson McDonald. So if you're the Golden Hawks right now, you couldn't have come up with a better start to this first half. They're up big, and it looks like they're going to be up even bigger. That was an excellent cut there by Jackson McDonald. Uh, play starting to the left, one good foot in the ground, cut right, and solid gain. Red zone offense now, ball at the 14-yard line. Centennial has really been doing a great job of taking advantage of Independence offensive mistakes, and this Falcon defense has got to be fatigued. Again, it's Copas. Looks left, then right. Tangled up. He's got a ton of room. He might run this in. Can he get there? And he does. Touchdown, Four Golden Hawks. Well. And the helmet gets ripped off of Adam Copas, but... Big deal. He doesn't have to come out on the next play. He doesn't have to play the next play. Touchdown, Golden Hawks. Nice job watching Copas run the ball there. You know, again, we, he hadn't been pressured much. He had decent time there, but he saw an opening, took advantage of it. You know, that's something when we watched Levi Manning play last year, he was a guy that would hold the ball a long time and then break tackle after tackle and was impossible to bring down and really led the Golden Hawks to a, a, a very nice season last year. Copas there able to run without even getting touched. Here's the PAT. Hernandez trying to get things just to be calm and cool here. And hey, that looked like an orthodox PAT Hernandez right there. Up and good. So it's 26 to 0. 26 to 0, and we have a ton of time left in this second quarter. The Centennial kickoff team has got to be getting a little bit tired. With 10.57 left to go in the Getting second Getting some quarter. action in. So, again, it, Coach Hill Hobble's in a tough spot here. You're down 26 points. Uh, your offense is just keeps shooting itself in, in its foot. It's, I don't think it's so much Centennial creating turnovers, though that is a part of it, but Independence just being a little bit um, willy-nilly with the football. Again, this is live exclusive coverage of the Kern High Network's 
high school football game tonight, Centennial hosting Independence. We also have a game out in Arvin, God's Country, the Garden and the Sun, Kenny Calvin. Calling that game on our other game tonight, and that's the Bears hosting Kern Valley. When it start, you know, coming over from Texas has really put together a good staff. A couple guys I've worked with on that staff, uh, Mark Hernandez and Andy Coyle, and then, uh, you know, two big names, Chad Brown, who's got head coaching experience himself, including here, and then Sean Alexander, who was one of those really good centennial quarterbacks back in the day yeah, I saw when, coach. when they were a machine. Here's the kickoff. To Coach's point, they've kicked off five times. Back at the one-yard line. Got some room. Gets to the outside. He's going to get run down at about the 30, and he gets brought down to the 36-yard line. So a good return. And we, get, we said Anthony Rico's the spark, and they're going to, I think, need to start force-feeding him the ball offensively to try and get something Thank positive you going here. If you are missing your car key, one was just turned in up here to the announcer's booth. If you can come and identify the they, It looks like Prince Ellis you. is in offensively. So I, I think we're going to see him in at quarterback. Diego Hernandez had a little bit of trouble handling the football. This is a pistol offense. Shotgun snap is about a yard or two tighter than a regular offense. So they stay on the ground, but they sure like to just chew up some clock now. <laughs> Believe it or not, just chew up the clock. Keep that Centennial offense off the field. Number two, good on the carry, brought down by number 53. Now they, they've, you know, over the last six plays, they've turned the ball over more than they've been successful. But before that, that first drive, they picked up a couple first downs, threw the ball well, ran the ball well, um, until they turned it over. But... Just give these offensive linemen a chance to open some holes for exactly, you. Exactly, coach. Second and nine. Prince Ellis now at QB. He's a southpaw. Fires one out there to the outside. Nice move out there by Rico. Rico bought some time and some real estate, and that Falcons crowd is, hey, there we go. There we go. So Rico can literally play anywhere on the field, and he's the guy, like we said, that, that is their big play guy. And, and he's the leader on this team. So they need to get, keep getting him the ball and letting him do what he does because, you know, that was a fine example of taking a short pass and making a first down out of it. And that's a huge first down for these guys and their confidence. Nice ball by Prince Ellis, too. First and 10, Ellis looks to keep. Oh, puts a nice move on and gets brought Ellis from behind. The coaching staff four, looking for a horse collar, not going to get it. Two. Make it second down and 12. Now, Ellis looks like he's got that left ankle taped pretty good, but you can see that he's got a little jitterbug in him. His brother, King, had played for me as a freshman when I was over at Ridgeview. Just a great family, um, great kids. So uh, excited to see what he's got to offer here at quarterback. Under 10 to go in the first half. A long road ahead for the Falcons tonight. Ellis looks to his left. <clears throat> Great move out there, and he oh, finds Rico. Rico looking for the end zone. I think he'll get it. And it's a touchdown. No, oh, there's a flag way oh, wow. back at the 40-yard line. My goodness. And it's going to be against the Falcons. How tough of a night can it be? Boy, that is heartbreaking there because so many good things on that play, but obviously one big negative. Oh, man, great job by Ellis. Uh, you know, he started scrambling a little early there, but he found a receiver, and then somebody oh, else. Oh, they wave it off. Touchdown. Oh, there we go. <laughs> All right, something finally went their way. <laughs> Centennial crowd booing. They're like, hey, whoa, 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 it's our night. Flag is waved off. Touchdown, Falcons. There was a receiver that I got to take my hat off to for Independence that threw a great block that really sprung Rico there for the last 25 yards of that, that touchdown. I wish I had his number. Because uh, that kid deserves some serious credit because it was a heck of a block. Starrett is not real happy about them picking up that flag. Five, 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 
He and Coach Alexander giving it to him. Well, Coach Alexander's <laughs> Richie, Richie, Richie. We're up 20 now. Let's go. We got it. He's fired up. Yeah, we didn't get an explanation for what, why the flag was dropped and then why it was picked up. Okay. Daniel Smith on for the PAT. Well, I suppose any th team that went from 0-6 to winning their next nine right. games, you can't count them out. <laughs> They've got some stick to don't they, Coach? There's the snap, a little of a lob snap. And that's up, and it's through. This kick is good. 26 so 7. We'll step away for a short break half. here. 9 0 1 left in seven. this first Your half box. here on the Current 9 Network. 26 7, still Centennial. All right, Independence going to kick off here. Prince Ellis comes in along with Anthony Rico, provides the spark. You know, last week we talked about a single drop of rain starts a flood. Well, it only takes a spark to get a fire started. Maybe Prince Ellis and Rico were those sparks. All right, over to the right side, and it stays in. So it's going to have to be picked up by Estrada at the three-yard line. But Estrada cuts back up against the grain. Flag on the play. Estrada brought down at the 40. Uh, Kenny Calvin just let us know it's 22 to nothing. Arvin over Kern Valley right now. So the Bears taking care of business. The Arvin Bears. The world's just a better place when Arvin's got a good football team. It's, it? like, it's like the Raiders. You know, when the Raiders are good, NFL's good. All right, a couple flags on the field. Saw one early in the in the run back. The last one might have been a horse collar, um, but it was thrown a little bit after the tackle. I don't know if he just missed it the first time he reached for it in his pocket or what, but the officials are discussing it. Got a top-notch Kern County crew here tonight, so they'll get to the bottom of it. Speaking of that, if you want to earn a few bucks on the side, get into these football games, make a little money, the Kern County football uh not football coaches, football officials association. KCOA is looking for people that are anxious to help out. It may be offsetting. We and uh oh, personal foul there. Oh boy. Several penalties on the play. We had a holding on independence. So a little of this, a little of that. We'll see where the ball ends up being spotted here. Yeah. Noe Estrada got up pretty heated. He was pretty hot. And maybe due to the late hit that came in. Coach Schilhobble out also speaking with the white hat. Back at the Centennial 25. Not sure how that math worked yeah, out. After all the penalties, the ball will be spotted at the 25-yard line. I thought there were two Centennial fouls. I think there were two fouls on the Golden Hawks, frankly. Okay, there yeah. must have been. Our man Matt Alvarez is watching the Kern High Network's coverage tonight. He believes Estrada got called. He was the one that spiked the ball out of anger and got uh -huh. the call. And I'll bet he thought he was horse collared. 
Um, exactly. Can't be spiking that ball, though. Under nine to go here in this first half. This is about the first time we've seen the Golden Hawks on their own end of the field. <laughs> right. They've been at the 40 to 47. Oh, they went for the hard count. Almost got a guy again. Sweep action. Good inside out pursuit, but boy, way to fight for extra yards there. Nice run by Hoban Hogue there. Number eight, Hoban Hodge on the carry. Oh, Hodge, sorry, Hodge, Hodge is the uh, junior wide receiver. Gets up to the 35 yard line. That's good for a Centennial Bulldog. Uh, Touchdown! I need a pronunciation oh. key. Yeah, we. I call some of those, you know, whenever we do the Cal State University basketball games and all these European players, boy. But hats off to the hockey guys. The hockey guys, oh, man. Are, they're legendary, man. They can call more hard, difficult names in a span of 10 seconds. Those French-Canadian names. You're right. Timeout taken by the Falcons. 8-16. We'll step away for a minute. 26-7. You're watching the Current High Network. And the Golden Hawks up big here in the first half. Back right after this. After the Falcons timeout, there's 8-16 remaining here in this first half. 26-7. Golden Hawks up big. Copas wants to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. Floats one down here to the sidelines. And it's nice. Oh, they do throw the flag over here on the Centennial side. Looks like both guys were battling there. But uh, typically that's going to go against the defense. All right. Trenton Hernandez there, the intended receiver. Centennial's got these receivers all, all pretty long, all move pretty well. You know, that's going to create a lot of tough matchups because, boy, if you, if you try to double Santiago, you've got some other guys that are quality receivers yeah, sir, friends, that can really make you pay. First down, I know that um, Hoge had, had 250 yards receiving coming into this game. So, I mean, we've talked a lot about Santiago, but, but he's, he's been their primary target up to tonight. All right, another flag here as we're getting quite a few of them here uh, in the last few minutes. Ouch. Oh, the sidelines for the Falcons the called for an unsportsmanlike conduct, so that's the last thing you want if you're the Falcons. Yeah, got to keep your cool over there. Players are dealing with it already. All right, first and 10, ball quickly at the Independence 35-yard line. I wonder if they marked off too much yardage there. Oh, they're trying to get the back judge's attention. Bit of a disjointed second quarter already. It's only, only four minutes gone in the second quarter, and it's... Going a pretty slow pace. Reminds me of an old car I used to have. Really? What kind? It was a, a Taurus. And Taurus. Uh, sometimes it went and sometimes it didn't. And <laughs> hey, I grew up in Harvard, as everybody knows. I learned all the geographical points of Bakersfield growing up by where my cars broke down. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I broke down over here before. Oh, I got a flat tire here before. Oh, yeah, my mufflers. Oh, yeah, I've been here. I ended up uh, driving it around the outside edge of Bakersfield because one of the dealerships was offering $500 for any car you turned in. And uh, average speed was about 11 miles an hour over there. It came in smoking, but I made it. 
I want my five bills. <laughs> All right, looks like we're back to action here. 8.03 remaining in the first half, 26-7. You got Santiago right down here below us, one-on-one -on -one with Prince Ellis. A nice little matchup for Friday night in Bakersfield. Centennial again taking a good look at that Falcon defense. Outside zone play called, wrapped up in the backfield, and a loss on the play, and a holding call. Holding call on the Golden Hawks. So again, that's the old car here going bumpity bump, and this, the clock's been stopped like the last six plays. Literally, this five minutes has been about, what, a half an hour. All right, now that... They, Duke marked the holding from the spot of the foul, and that one must have taken place a good four yards behind the line of scrimmage. So the Golden Hawks backed up way back with a first and 24. Now, this is where if I get man coverage on one of my receivers, I'm taking a shot here. Safety's right in the middle of the field. Looks like cover, cover one. Screen play. They lob one up, and it's taken by Jonathan Boyd. Boyd with a couple of nice moves, and he gets a big chunk of it back. Good play call there by the Golden Hawks. It took advantage of Independence really trying to dial up their pass rush. And another flag is on the field. Oh, boy. Believe it or not. Healthy on the play. A very long and officious second quarter. We still have 7.41 to go in the second quarter. Man, oh man. And, and they wave we'll it off. Go. There we go. Second well, down. Actually, yeah, that's a nice job. These Second officials got together, talked it over. From the 32 yard line. I'm wondering if they thought there was a lineman down the field. If the ball's thrown beyond the line of scrimmage, that would be the call. I think that ball was thrown right at the line of scrimmage. Second and six. Inside handoff will sweep. They give it to Santiago. Oh, no, that's not Santiago. That is Hodge. Hogue on the end around. Hogue. Well, he just chased it up on me. I thought it was Hodge. Man, sometimes you just can't win. Hoban Hodge. H O G E. To the family, we apologize sincerely. Head coach Rich Durrett, assistant coaches Andy Coyle, Sean Alexander, Chad Brown, Jim Arneson, Ken Gavin, Mark Hernandez. The trainer. The one and only Triton Douglas. Love that kid. Athletic director, our good friend Tom Haskell, and principal Ryan Coleman here at Centennial High School. Thank you. More on that later. Copas wants to put it in the air. He does. And he finds his man. Hogue. Very fortunate that Centennial didn't get backed up 15 yards there. A little loss of temper after that play. Now, Centennial did a great job of making it from a first and 24 to move in the chains, but boy, you gotta, you gotta keep your guys in line here. You can't jeopardize the team by doing something selfish. So Centennial has been doing a really good job mixing up the run and the pass here this game. Second and three. And it's pitched and caught out there so to the Jonathan Boyd. Boyd. Boyd steps out of bounds after the hit. And another flag. I, I, I'm guessing that's going to be called helmet to helmet. So, bumpy going here. Yep. Helmet to helmet is the right call. It's going to set up a first and goal. See if Centennial gets into that too tight, super eye formation. Looks like they're going to stay spread. Jonathan Boyd in the backfield, standing on the right hip of Copas. Into the back corner. Oh, what a fantastic throw and a better catch to who else? Jackson Santiago. Touchdown, Golden Hawks. Well, that is just absolutely picture perfect. 
That's really well done. Obviously, you can tell that they practice it because he put it up there where Jackson Santiago, who's got about a maybe an eight-inch advantage in height, uh, could go up and get it. And we watched him in warm-ups doing the same thing, where Santiago just goes up and gets that ball so well and so consistently. Touchdown, Golden Hawks, 32-7. Six minutes to go in the second quarter. Going for two. Trying to get two of those back. And Falcons, are they going to let it happen? No, they're not. So nice job. That's number four, Jack McDonald. On the oh, oh boy. here we go. All right. Great penetration there by uh, Independence from the interior of the line. Really, that play had no chance from the get-go. And then we had a... Centennial offensive lineman pick up a 15-yarder for throwing somebody around after the play. Exactly six minutes left here in the first half, 32-7. All, right. All Golden Hawks. So Centennial will be kicking off from the 20-yard line most likely. That drive featured about eight penalties. But Centennial was able to maintain it. Has a 25-point advantage with six minutes to play in the second quarter. Had a busy start already to this fall of 2022. We had Stockdale at Highland two weeks ago on a Thursday night. Then we had Spanish Hills at Liberty on Friday night. And we had Miramonte at East Volleyball, BHS at Centennial Volleyball. And then we had two games last week. Rich and I were at Golden Valley for the East Golden Valley game. Rick Van Horn and Kenny Calvin were at the Frontier BHS game. This past Tuesday night, we had volleyball. Golden Valley at South. It's a good Golden Valley volleyball team, that's for sure. And then we had, last night, the perennial powerhouse volleyball team, Liberty, hosting Central. And as loaded as Central is in all of their athletics, they're no match for the Patriots. And then here we are tonight with two games, and this has been... Penalty, it's been an up and down one with regards to flow and tempo and pace. It started out great, and then we've had a ton of penalties in the second quarter. And the Golden Hawks are up 32-7. to seven. This could get into that dangerous running clock scenario in the second half. So a couple other scores. I've got Stockdale 9. Ridgeview 6 at halftime. Bishop Diego 28, Garces 7, Shafter 28, Miramonte 0, Porterville 14, Foothill 0, CVC 21, Bakersfield Christian 0, Kennedy 14, Highland 14, and Modern Day 29, Centennial Corona 7. If you're into Southern Section private school football. Oh, make that 9, Stockdale 12, Ridgeview. Correction at the half. Did you give all those from Van Horn? I just did. Okay, got it, got it. That's what you're reading. Well, the officials are having another discussion before the kickoff here. Now, I did see a Centennial guy throw an Independence guy down, and I assume that's what the penalty was. But maybe he deserved it because they marked the penalty off of Independence here. Still six minutes to go here in the second quarter. Yikes. I wonder if officials get paid by the hour. I'm glad you said that. You're a coach. <laughs> yeah. on kick off hey, if you off. see it, you got to call it. So. Estrada, I'm going to put this one deep, real deep. Kick is through the back of the end zone for a touchback. All right, so Independence will get the ball at their own 20. King Ellis came in last time, helped light the spark. They scored. It seems like that was a couple days ago that that happened. But in reality, it was just their last drive that Independence went down there and Scored off of a big play. So we'll see what King Ellis can do this, this series at quarterback. 
officials timeout. And I, I, the officials timeout, I, I think they're gonna ask what, who those kids officials are in the end zone. They're looking over at all the students in the end zone down there. Maybe want to know what they're doing, but they didn't spend that much time worrying about it as they're going to continue on here. First and 10, exactly six to go in the second quarter. Ellis hands the ball off to Gooden. Gooden to the right side. Gooden goes around the right edge, picks up seven before being knocked out of bounds. Nice start to the drive there for Independence. Watching wide receiver number 11, Amarius Rowe out there blocking his tail off. Love to see those guys out Six wide five, working hard. Well, that's a bloodline football name, isn't it? Get the Rowells involved. Second and five. Ellis back to his left. One little fake of a pass, and that buys him some Ellis yardage. So, out of bounds up to about the just that one little pump one fake, bottom five, five yards, picks up the first down. And that's that's so something again. That Ellis down. bloodline, his brother King, County Player of the Year, his senior year at South High, making plays similar to that. Looks like there was nothing there, and all of a sudden he scampers for a seven-yard gain and moves the chains, and holds on to the football. So first and 10 for the Falcons. Ball's at their own 32-yard line. Five minutes to go in the half. Flicks one out here, and it is broken up. Waiting for it was Tanner Forbus. Left-handed quarterback rolling to Mark his left. Gonzalez. Threw the ball on time, but a great reaction there by Mark Gonzalez to broken knock that Tanner ball out. Well, that was close to being disastrous. One, two, three. Yeah, Centeno's got one too many guys on the field, hustling off now. Playing that too high look. Inside run, that's about two yards for the Falcons. Going to bring up third and long. All right, we've seen From Prince Ellis ball. drop back four up. times. Two, Two of those he's elected to run. So if I'm the Golden Hawks, I'm, I'm setting a spy up, somebody on him who's not really going to drop into coverage, but will just make sure that you kind of keep him corralled if that's possible. We've got man coverage here at the bottom. Safety's all the way on the other hash. Ellis looks, thinks about unloading it, does unload it. It's up there a long time, and it floats, almost picked off. Got a lot of air under it, started to wobble a little bit about the 34-yard line. It drew a crowd, and it's incomplete. So Independence will be forced to punt. Their defense is going to have to hold here uh, at the end of the first half. That ball is spotted incorrectly. I'm um, not exactly sure what the umpire was looking at, but he missed the mark by three yards. Here he goes. Mulligan. Everybody should get one or two of those a game, right? <laughs> so I've heard. Bullard 13, three, Frontier three, 10. Fireball 22, Carruthers 17. The and they're, I believe they are still missing. No, they had... A 15-yard punt there. That gives the Golden Hawks great field position again on independence side of the field. Centennial has been able to march the ball down each of their last four or maybe five times here, and, and most of the time it's been with a pretty short field. Under four to go here in this first half. And you think about what Coach Sterrett's going to do and 
how he'll approach this the series. He's called a great game. Um, again, he does a really good job of keeping you off balance with different formations and different schemes. Coming out empty here on first down. He's one of the few coaches that will throw the ball as well as run it on first down on a very consistent basis. An empty set back there for Copas. Fires, throws, and what a snag by Jackson Santiago. He just set it up perfectly, slid down behind it, and kind of just caught it off the left of his body. Yeah, I, I would come right back with that formation, and I would run the exact same thing because you, all you had was the safety plan, 12 yards over the top, no linebacker help underneath on, you know, the, one of the top guys in town here. Now, they're going with a different formation, but I'd definitely come back to that at some point. Everybody's packed in tight. For a second now, we'll see. Again, they sweep it out here to the near side. Oh, what a big hit. And that was, again, Jobin Hoag. And he delivered a little bit of the punishment. So they go out of bounds. I, oh, I thought they did. The clock continues to run. He did not get out, I guess, in time. His knees went down. down and 10 from the 22-yard line. Golden Hawks have plenty of time with three minutes to go here in the second quarter, looking to extend their lead. They come back to the near side. They put it in Hernandez's hands. Hernandez looking. Hernandez, and he gets into the end zone. Touchdown, Centennial. Trenton Hernandez took a little pass to the side over here, and he was off, and all of a sudden it's 38-7. to Boy, we talked about the different schemes that Centennial has, and, and there you see it. I mean, it's one thing to try to do a lot of things. It's another thing to do those things well. And Centennial's execution is really good. So hats off to the Centennial coaching staff for putting a game plan together here that really keeps the defense off balance. Here's Hernandez. It ain't Hernandez on for the PAT attempt. The snap, the hold, the kick, and this one is up and it it's through. Up and, good. and that'll make it 39 to 7 with 244 Take remaining control, here in this first, first half. half. It is all in centennial tonight. Centennial here on the current high network on Vance Palm alongside Rich Cornford and Julian Wilson. And this game started off with a really nice feel to it. Seemed like it was two evenly matched teams that were going to give us a great game. We all kind of were looking for that, but Boy, the turnover bug hit Independence early and often, and every single time, literally every single time, the, the Golden Hawks scored. So there was maybe one time in the early part of the second quarter where they didn't score off of it and were held. But other than that, they scored a ton of points off these turnovers, and they have made a change at quarterback. And it wasn't that Diego Hernandez was playing poorly, just to... Sometimes you got to go with a kind of a different feel, just four turnovers, one of them on the punt return team. And after a while, you kind of have to just say, well, let's try something different here. But to no avail, it's still been centennial all the way. Number one, Noah is on the kickoff for the Golden Hawks. Golden Hawks done a great job covering these kicks. Estrada, who scored the touchdown, nice kickoff into the end zone. Can't return those in California. Over the end zone will be good for a touchback. And the will take over at the 20-yard line. Boy, you've got to come up with some seriously inspirational stuff, Coach, to tell your student-athletes when it's, when it's like this and there's still another half to play, you've got to really dig deep and find some motivational triggers to get them to really dig in and, 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 and play for all the right reasons. Most notably, it's only September 2nd. There's a lot of football left in this season, and kind of want to have to work through this process here tonight. Yeah, I mean, uh, it is tough to go into that locker room down 30 points. Sweep it over to this side. This is the quarterback that started the game, Diego Hernandez. We talked about that he's a track star, so it's good. They've, they found another way that he can help the team here. Running that fly sweep. Picks up 10 yards. Will be a first down at the 30. And if I'm Independence right now, that's, that's what I'm working for. First downs, first downs. Create some momentum. Create a little bit of consistency. 
if you start going, you know, swinging for home runs, you strike out more than often. And uh, you don't want to give the Golden Hawks the ball here, again, on your own end with any time left on the clock. Ellis, flushed out of the pocket, look out, tries to make Move. a U-turn, but he gets brought down by Jackson McDonald. His knees went Number down four. at about McDonald the 17-yard line, so. Ellis down here, he came in with a bit of a <coughs> bum ankle, I think just leaving because the helmet came off. Lost his lid, so he'll be out for a play. Loss of 11 yards. So it's not just this centennial offense and all the firepower coach this defense is coming to play as well Second down yeah and they the they, they feel very good about their defensive line as well and they, they play a 3-4 scheme and uh, those guys really get off the ball well oh ball no ball pops oh god <laughs> did you see that I did I, I would not advise that so Cope has tried to get rid of it Pitch to number Sometimes a loss of two Rodriguez. isn't as bad as things can get, you know, and uh, you just you, you got to protect that ball a little bit more than than he's been protecting it. And they were very fortunate to get that one back. We're under a minute now left. Third and 21. Centennial content not to use their timeouts. They've got a couple left. If I'm Independence, I'd milk this clock and. Try to get out of here this half without any more damage done to me. Safeties are playing very deep for Centennial, so dangerous to throw it downfield. They're going to try. Ellis throws. Oh, no, sorry. That's Hernandez, Hernandez with the right hand. He got rid of it. Thought for a moment Ellis threw with his right hand. I forgot Hernandez is back there. Didn't. Simon Sanchez there with a good open field tackle. Well, like, they're going to let this just go out and let that be the end of the first half. And it's a big one for the Golden Hawks. 39-7, to seven, a ton of miscues and turnovers by the Falcons, and it's a big, big lead here. We will take the half off, and we'll see you at the beginning of the third quarter, all of this on the Kern High Network. Great to have you with us tonight. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. 
you put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had a chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. A lot of more uh, hands-on activity, a lot of more about woodworking and, and what to do, how to make a career for myself. It's not only for guys. I am actually learning how to make cupboards and put it together, like doors, cabinets. It's really fun, actually. It's really amazing to see their growth over the course of a year and how they can come in with no real skill at all and leave being able to actually produce furniture and cabinetry. Houses need cabinets, businesses, having a pool of resources or kids that have some knowledge in the industry would be real good. Pull down on that. Let's slide these up. Watch fingers. It's changed a lot. What I'm seeing here is what it's going towards. The CNC equipment, computers. I could actually build cabinets out of this shop. It's, it's state of the art, it really is. I am constantly looking for students that have been through these programs. It's always nice to have a person that has some experience. It's a lot easier to train. I think we're fortunate in Bakersfield that the current high school district has invested in a program like this. I would encourage other businesses to partner up with the Kern High School District like I've done here because this really shows you what can be done if business comes together with the Kern High School District. This is where we're going to train the kids to actually get jobs in the industry. We're going to give them the basic tools that they need, also the skills that they need to understand where they fit into the industry. All the animated things, because we have everything that we need in the scenes. They are learning the principles of animation, Photoshop, they're learning how to animate in 2D and 3D. And when you swap to that shape, then you're just going to drag these over here. The storyboard aspect of creating basically the skeleton of the story and then just sort of directing people on my vision of what I want in the story. And it's also giving me the advantage of Mr. Pollard since he's worked at so many companies, being able to put it in my resume and be like, this is the art direction I've received. I have two lambs. <laughs> Taking care of animals is you feed them twice a day, make sure they have water, walk them, make sure they're ready for fair. Vet science is the first year before you can actually go into animal science and it's a lot of like hands-on with the different animals and you get to learn different things such as giving shots, castrating, all that fun stuff. For me, wanting to be a vet when I'm older, it helped prepares me. All the stuff that I'm learning in ag is definitely going to help me. I'm in ag communications. Anything that you see on the Facebook page is what we do, and pictures, and we do all the posters that are around campus, anything that just promotes ag. Our students are all part of the FFA organization, and through that we have a chapter officer team. We do monthly chapter meetings because we're trying to get them involved outside of class they can find something that they're interested in and they need something that's going to hook them so that they're ready for life after high school.
the Animal Care, the students learn a variety of things, whether it's tools or terms in the veterinary field. They learn about the skeletal systems, the animal nutrition, the housing, how to properly care for them. They also have the opportunity in the spring to actually go work at a veterinary hospital or at an animal shelter or a grooming salon. Animal restraint, weight and temperature, pulse, respiration, all of that I learned here. They take a state certified test, and if they pass, they become a certified vet assistant right out of high school. It's always hands-on, and so I think that's what really helps us is that we're not just getting it from a textbook, we're actually doing these things, and we're actually practicing these things that we'll be doing in our future careers. It's wicked cool. It's, it's our new aviation class. It gives kids a chance to break into the industry. There's a lot of careers in aviation. This class is a lot more than just flying planes. We've learned so much already. We've learned how to take off. We've learned instrument flight rules. It's something everyone can do, I think. And you see, remember that horizon? Try to keep it parallel to your cockpit. After the two-year program, they're going to be able to take the knowledge test for their private pilot exam. I am a pilot. I've been uh, in Bakersfield for 10 years. I worked as an instructor for six years and then became a corporate pilot. And I'm a teacher here. <laughs> we have amazing equipment. Even flight schools don't have that much equipment. You put a class like this somewhere at North High and it, it's really preparing kids to succeed because it gives them a whole new set of opportunities they never knew that they had the chance to pursue. I'm proud to say that I'm from North High School and that we have administration that's willing to put the money into offering really, really neat programs like this and preparing kids to succeed. Manufacturing engineering. We design parts, 3D parts, 2D parts, we create assemblies. It's helping me get training and all of this stuff, like the computer programs that we have here, the machines that we have here. We learn a lot of math in here, mostly geometry and fractions, because I love math. That's why I'm in this class. Mr. Lemmy, he's a great instructor. So the problem is this piece itself. He really goes hands-on with us. He helps us as much as we can. We've learned a lot from him. Right now we're supplying students that are skilled in the safety, basic operation of machine work. And then they also leave with some soft skills. They understand they have to be on time. They understand that they have to get up and talk to people. Most of them are walking out of here with a solid foundation in the entry level of a trade. They can have a job anywhere they go because they have a basic understanding of what it's going to take to put products out that people are going to use. Hopefully this is a good career for me. You know, end up doing something good, have a good life, and make some money. <laughs> We're learning a lot and especially with just the basic knowledge of what you would need for an entry-level job. All the basic skills to be a medical assistant in a doctor's office or a clinic. You're leaning on it and that'll make a difference. And then they also do on-the-job training and they work in doctor's offices or clinics throughout Kern County. The kids are job ready, and many of them are employed before the end of the school year. They're promised a job, as well as they continue their education. We have many registered nurses out there and even physicians. I'm thinking I want to be an anesthesiologist. So a lot of school, but it'll be worth it in the end. We're learning the 
different roles, what a game designer is, what they do, and how video games are made, and how to deconstruct them. We're also going to be teaching the hard skills, which includes learning the Unreal Engine. What the Unreal Engine is, is it's a game development tool that students will be able to use to make their very own video games. And this is something that actually industry professionals use every day to make uh, some of the top selling games. They're all the same size. You're all on the same plane. There's no undulating terrain or anything like that. Our instructor, he's really amazing. He encourages everybody. He's really fun and he makes learning fun. So they've got top of the line computers here and they're set up to excel. I would be surprised if other students their age coming out of high school would have anywhere near the level of expertise that these guys are going to have. A lot of more uh, hands-on activity, a lot of more about woodworking and, and what to do, how to make a career for myself. It's not only for guys. I am actually learning how to make cupboards and put it together, like doors, cabinets. It's really fun, actually. It's really amazing to see their growth over the course of a year and how they can come in with no real skill at all and leave being able to actually produce furniture and cabinetry. Houses need cabinets, businesses, having a pool of resources or kids that have some knowledge in the industry would be real good. Pull down on that. Let's slide these up. Watch fingers. It's changed a lot. What I'm seeing here is what it's going towards. The CNC equipment, computers. I could actually build cabinets out of this shop. It's, it's state of the art. It really is. I am constantly looking for students that have been through these programs. It's always nice to have a person that has some experience. It's a lot easier to train. I think we're fortunate in Bakersfield that the current high school district has invested in a program like this. I would encourage other businesses to partner up with the current high school district like I've done here because this really shows you what can be done if business comes together with the current high school district. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, 
We've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. Independence getting set to return the kickoff here in the second half. That first half pretty much all centennial. Independence showed some flashes early but could not hang on to the football and Centennial took advantage of it time after time. Up 39 to 7 here. The one spark that Independence did have is when they inserted Prince Ellis in at the quarterback spot. He uh, directed him down to a a touchdown. Number one, no he's trying on the kickoff for the Golden Ops to start this second half. Anthony Rico caught a short pass and took it 40 yards for the independence only score. Line drive kick. Oh, he returnable. Tippy toe, tippy toe right, return, right in front right in front of the goal line. Hey, Rich, before we go too far, I want to thank Centennial High School for hosting us tonight. A special thank you to Stan Green, who we were able to see tonight. And more on what he and Rich were talking about here in a couple minutes. Some exciting news. We want to thank all of our current high school district superintendents and our sponsors at Valley Strong Credit Union for allowing us to put on events like this for our community. Tonight, our player of the game will be the premier lighting player of the game, the lights out player of the game. And the Centennial Administration, Principal Ryan Coleman, the AP of Instruction, Carrie Palacios, AP of Administration, Nicole Oliver, Athletics Director, our good friend Tom Haskell, and the Activities Director, Jaina Chapman. Here we go. A run play to the right side. Three, Anthony Rico. Rico runs to the right side. So, again, thank you to everybody at Centennial. Pleasure to be here tonight. I'm Vance Palm with Rich Cornford, Julian Wilson. As we start the third quarter, it's 39-7. Centennial had a big, big first half capitalizing on mistakes, errors, turnovers, and just bad luck from the Falcons. And Anthony Rico is the go-to guy. Look for him to be used in a variety of positions and just force-fed the ball if you need to. Got Diego Hernandez back in at quarterback here. Diego's got some serious speed. We saw him. Uh, inserted as a Number slot two, and run a fly sweep uh, earlier, Brock but Allen, had trouble eight, hanging on to the football. And, and really, as the quarterback, that's one of your big Six jobs to ensure that you keep it till you score. Third down and two. So, Coach Shilhobble trying to build the kid's confidence. He is just a sophomore, and he really can fly with that track speed. Third and short. Ball's at the 29 yard line. Independence shifting around. Looks like they're going to get it, Rich, and they do. A nice, nice run right there by, as you mentioned, Rico. Still on his feet. Big carry, first down. Yeah, I would, I would make sure he touches the ball 10 to 15 times this half because he, he's your best football player. He was a heck of a player last year, senior this year, and... Uh, He's the guy that can make things happen. So update, Bullard 20 to 10 over Frontier in the third quarter. And the Arvin Bears stretching out their lead also over Kern Valley. Independence wants to stay balanced. It's important for them to stay in front of the chains. Look out, he flips it forward. A dangerous Hernandez play by Diego Hernandez. And when we went to Amaya break at Powell. halftime, we took the headphones off and just kind of let out a big sigh because we feel for Coach Schilhobel and the Falcons. But you made a salient point. Look, quarterback's got to take care of the ball. Yeah, he does. And, and I think he's in that mode where hey, he's trying to press and make every play a home run. That particular play, they had a swing pass. Both receivers went to block, but Centennial had covered the swing. So he was really left 
high and dry with, with no really good options. Uh, that's when you really want that guy to just you kind of throw it in the dirt. Um, he tried the, the old shovel throw there. Got away with at least an incompletion. Right. Going to be third and eight here for the Falcons. Riley on the tackle for the Golden Rocks. If you're a coach, Shilhaba, what did you tell your guys in the locker room? Well, I told them that, uh, you know, every quarter matters, every play matters. And so, I mean, likely you're not going to be able to fool people and say, hey, we, you know, we're going to make a great comeback here. But you want to see guys fight. Every game, every play, every snap is on film here. And you, you really want to find out the character of your team because most guys play really well when they're up, but your real character is displayed when you're down. Nice throw by Prince Ellis Marius there. Pass, How about this? Amarius Rowell. Across midfield up to the Golden Hawk 35 yards. And it's no yard surprise line. to Rich and I. We know what they have. It's just been a tough, tough go of it tonight. That was a really good job of throwing on time. He, he, you know, we call that catch and release if you're into fishing. Caught, he caught the snap, and ball was immediately out of his hand, so the Centennial Rush could ha had no chance of getting to him. Right on target there. Nice opening drive here for the Falcons. Well, that's exactly what the doctor ordered. You know, some positive yards, take care of the football, be aggressive, don't hang your head and drop your shoulders. Let's get out there and get after it. And Ellis throws a really good short ball. You know, that, that laser for about 20-yard throws, he's, he's been very accurate. A little RPO action right there, five. getting the ball out quick. I think, I think they've got one. something there. We saw him go deep in the first half and kind of floated it, but this short to intermediate range looks like his ball game. There's a pitch. That's a nice relationship right there, but just fantastic defense by these Golden Rico. Hawks as well. As nice of a play as that was, it was four. still Tanner Forbus Jack running him down. Ball. Right, yeah. <laughs> Good play offensively, but even better defensively. He'd hold that to just two yards, so... Third and two from the Centennial, or yeah, Centennial's 29-yard line. But very impressed with this we'll this opening drive here and just the, the good mixture line. of runs and passes and using Ellis' strength to their advantage. And again, that's something that Shill Hobble does, does extremely well. He's, he's going to find ways to get the ball to his playmakers and utilize their strength. Ball's on the near hash right below us. 28-yard line, third and three, as Coach just said. And we dip below the eight-minute mark. Again, not the not the cleanest handoff, but Gooden picks up the first down. It's awful close. Oh, I thought he had it. No, it's going to be fourth. Good chance for the Falcons to maybe try the hard count. We've seen in the first quarter they – the Centennial offense kept the Falcons off balance by using it. As a coach, you love those free first downs. Split way out to the right, Rowell. And it's going to be a keeper. The and the Ellis picks side. up the first down, so nice job by Prince. Picks up the first down. He's not the biggest kid, but he saw two yards there, knowing he only needed one, and he put the pads down and went after it. So interesting that they started this drive with Diego Hernandez at quarterback. Um, and then maybe it was after that little shovel throw. Um, that they inserted Ellis back in. And what a great play by Mason DeLeon. Flag comes down by the white hat right on top of that play. And I think he's going to call a horse collar. That was uh, definitely on the side. I wonder where the Mason Dixon line is for for that horse collar to be. I see what you did there. First name Mason DeLeon of the tackler. I get very, very, very nice, Rich. I'm a history teacher as well, so. You'll be here all week. <laughs> oh, that was too good, Coach. Mason DeLeon gets called with the horse collar. And After the horse dare I say, here come the Falcons. Yeah, I mean, as a coach, this is 
all you can really ask of your team is to come out and respond and keep fighting. You love to see that. To a strong side, the lefty, and he's pretty quick, and he's going to get to the 10-yard line, stepped out of bounds, took a big hit, unfortunately. Came, he came back inbounds and took a whop from McDonald. But That'll be good enough for a first down, first and goal. He's a heck of a basketball player, too. I know. Um, you, can, you can see the athleticism in him. Not the, not the biggest guy in the field, um, but certainly a, a, a playmaker and a guy that you really have to change the design of your defense around because of his ability to scramble and, and make something out of nothing. Again, he reminds me a lot more of LaDon Denmark, their super good quarterback from last year, because um, LaDon could make plays like that as well. First and goal from the eight. Gooden on his right, Rico on his left. He gives it to Rico. Rico nice makes cut. a really nice cut. Three, Rico in the carry. At the perfect time, that right tackle was out to the side, pushing out that defensive lineman. At the perfect time, Rico took a stab with his Take right foot, and up he goes. Second down and goal. The second goal from the four. So we're really seeing right now what independence potential is, right? If they just are clean with their handoffs and exchanges, they can be this team that can grind out yards, can throw the ball decently, and, and you know has multiple weapons to run it. Um, you know, second and goal from the five here. See if they can punch it in against the Golden Hawks and make something positive happen. Ellis again to Rico. Rico looks. Rico, Rico, touchdown, oh. Falcons. Boy, Anthony Rico just dotted and bobbed and weaved, and I think he knew all along he was going to get in. Just waited for the perfect time to not even get touched. Touchdown, Independence. Great yeah, run. That was a, a great run because it's, it's one of those things. You They blocked it okay, but he made three guys, you know, take bad angles just because of his speed and quickness over there. So great start for Independence. That was a, over a six-minute drive there by Independence to start this half. So, again, if I'm Coach Shalhobble, I'm, I'm thrilled because my team has responded to whatever he said at halftime. So right, Coach. So right. Daniel Smith with the PAT. When you're clawing your way back in, everything's important. And this is up, and it got through. It got through. We'll take a short break here. 39-14, that's the score. Independence has responded. We'll be back right after this. Try that number 13, Carson Eldridge. Coach Cornford said it best. These Falcons responded to what Coach Shilhawal had for them at halftime. And rather than try to mess around with onsides with all this football left, they're going deep and they kick it to Estrada, the dangerous Noe Estrada. And dangerous is what he is at the 50, so gets the knocked down at the 44-yard line. Right and you know, it's just a patient runner, doesn't force things. He just kind of took what was given to him, and he took that kind of flow right over here to the near side. And when he knew the contact was coming, he said, okay, I've got us to the 50 at least. He's been doing this for several years for Centennial, and yep. he's ran several back for touchdowns. So the excellent special teams play there on that return. All right, again, the Centennial offense with phenomenal field position. 
this time due to their kickoff return team. All right, so we saw Independence's offense really respond. Let's see the, what their defense can do here against the Centennial offense that was unstoppable for the last quarter and a half. Copas fakes the handoff. And there we have it. The first sack of the season oh, allowed the on the very five. first play of the Pineda. second half. George Pineda in there um, doing something that nobody else has been able to do against these Golden Hawks. Lots so judging by the first play, the Independence defense was listening to Coach Hill Hobble at halftime. <laughs> I would imagine he made it a, a universal statement. <laughs> Everybody in there with a white jersey. Yeah, that's I would guess on nearly 90 attempts or so, because it was, I think, 60 three or 66 coming into this game they they hadn't given up a sack second and 16 hard count nobody jumps from the falcons defensive line copas fires across the middle caught by santiago 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 looking to get to the end zone oh what a great move he makes the catch and does everything afterwards Jackson Santiago. Just when you think you've seen it all, he does something else. Yeah, well, and this kid's just a junior. I mean, his his ceiling is unbelievably high. Uh, you got a great student, great athlete, great team leader. They say extremely hard worker. Just everything you could want. Uh, and, and when your best athlete is your hardest worker, everything else takes off. We saw that here with Cody Kessler, you know, back uh, about 10 years ago. Um, now they have it with Jackson Santiago. And Michael Number Jordan eight, was always, always the standard bearer for that philosophy that, look, when the best player, not even on your team, but in the whole planet, is the hardest worker, that's, that's, that's when you run off six championships. Yeah, it's, you know? yeah very, very impressive. And what a great lesson to all you younger players out there in any sport. Junior high players, underclassmen might be watching this. If you're the best player, but you're not working very hard, boy, that'll get exposed. But if you're the best player and you're the hardest working player, you can get a lot of people on your side. And your teammates will pick it up too. You know, I was fortunate enough. My, my brother and a kid named Sheldon Canley were the captains my junior year. Sheldon ended up being drafted by the 49ers, played a few years in the NFL. And uh, he and my brother, both extremely hard workers. And we were a young team, but boy, it picked everybody else up. And, uh, you know, really influenced me in my own career. And, and then my senior year being a leader, trying to lead by with that example. So 46-14. Yes, it's a 32 point lead, but Knowing what we know about this Falcon team and the tough, tough breaks they had to deal with in the first half, it's a bit of a pick-me-up. <clears throat> Flag's got to come up. That was interesting. Did he get the whistle to go? Was Lucy holding the ball? <laughs> kind of looked like a little Charlie Brown <laughs> routine there. Arg. I, I think they're going to redo it. Are they going to redo it? Or are they going to... I, I don't think he knew if the whistle had been blown in yet but then why start running right if you're not sure and you take off running guess who else is going to start running so they move it back so he's been number kicking two, goodness, number kicking off pretty well i know they backed it up five yards but you know independence has both their guys at the 15 if he could punch it right between them there I think I'd back my guys up another five yards or so. We will see. Oh, and more whistles. Oh, the Independence guys are now lined up five yards from you the kicker. The, you got to back it up, guys. All right. <laughs> um, you know, we saw them 20 yards earlier. Now they're five. So some, some things I've never seen happen before. All right, that's the whistle, and I think we can go. Estrada will kick. See, you want your guys running forward to catch that ball. Yeah, not backwards. So. So. 412 left in the third. It's a big lead for Centennial. <clears throat> I'm Vance Palm with Rich Cornford. We are at Golden Hawk Stadium. 
on the west side. All right, well, Independence offense came out, had a very good time-consuming six-minute drive to start things off. Scored with it, and then Centennial uh, took a sack the first play and then threw the ball to the best player in town on the second play and ex brought that lead back up to 32 points. Prince Ellis at quarterback again. Two backs with him. He hands it to one of them. Look out. Nothing. Oh, Gooden gets free. Some big blocks, but... And a flag, but Noe Estrada, as quick and as forceful as he is, he caught up with Ellis, but a flag thrown right in the middle of the field. All right, Noe Estrada from his defensive back position making a tackle for about a 15-yard loss. Can't imagine that. This would be on, yeah, it looks like it's on independence, so they're going to decline. Well, they'll mark it off afterwards because it's personal, personal foul. foul. So okay. personal foul has to get marked off, so they take it from the start. Tacked on at the end of the uh, day, it looks like. Now independence is behind the eight ball. I mean, not that they weren't already. Yeah, I just guess. over four minutes to go in this third quarter. Is first down in a long ways. <laughs> Public address announcer just keeps it simple, doesn't he? First down in a long ways. Three receivers split way out to the left for quarterback Prince Ellis. Oh. Bad snap over the top. Ellis tries to get rid of it, tosses it, and... No, they call grounding. That's a safety. That is a safety. Well... <clears throat> Looks like there's a penalty flag in the end zone. There was a receiver in that direction. Yeah. Though Ellis was clearly... Just throwing it away out of bounds. There is a new rule in high school football. If you get outside the tackle, you can throw it away now. Um, but he he wasn't outside the tackle on that from our vantage point. I mean, that, that rule has been in place in the NFL, I think, in college for a while. But just got into California high school football this year. Yep, intentional grounding. And that's a safety. Penalty is intentional grounding. Takes place in the end zone. That will be good for a safety back on two more points to your goalie hop score. So Independence will kick off from the 20 yard line. So it's gone from bad to worse oh. for the Falcons. Yeah, you had some decent offensive momentum from that first drive, then you had a big loss of yardage and then a bad snap and when it rains it pours. Coach Schilhobble discussing it with the white hat. I think he's saying I, I did have a receiver in the area. Well, he had a Marius Rowell close. But I don't know that Ellis even knew that. <laughs> right. I don't think he did either. But I, I, I don't know. It, I, it was, I, I believe it was probably the right call. But I think I would be arguing just like Tyler Schilhobble is over there that, that I had a receiver in that area. All right, so they got a kickoff again. All right, Noe Estrada, dangerous return guy back deep. Almost guaranteed to get good field position when they're kicking off from the 20. It looks like you can, now you, in this situation, you can kick off or punt. You see a lot of teams that kick, though, because they don't have a punter. Yeah. And here comes the tee. All right. So now, now that the tee is out there, I'm thinking they are going to kick it. After watching their 15-yard punt earlier, I was a little bit surprised that they might go with the punter. But Jacob Maciel. Low burner. Picked up by Estrada at the 30. Again, looks for some room. Gets shoved to the outside. Oops. Still on his feet. And still on his feet. Estrada brought down pretty much at his normal spot, the 44-yard line. Well, he's fun to watch. Yeah, great effort there on that kickoff return. Fighting for every yard, you know, regardless of what the score is. 
Boy, it's been a great night. We do have the premier lighting lights out player of the game. Some early favorite names, of course, Jackson Santiago. He's got, what, four, four touchdowns, five, four, five. I've lost track. A Rich. plethora. A plethora. You also have the quarterback that's put it in his hands in Adam Kopas. We cannot give two shirts away tonight. I've been strictly warned. I broke the rules the other night and gave both setters from Golden Valley's volleyball team a shirt. Number five, Great tackle there. Rubel makes the 20. catch, but Jamie McQueen comes in and makes a big hit, coach. Yeah, love to see those good open field tackles there. Running through the guy, accelerate through the hit. All right, again, Centennial's offense has just been unstoppable. They've overcome penalties, uh, you know, long yardage situations, and they, they spread the ball out. They run it when you expect them to throw it, and they throw it when you expect them to run it. And just done a great job of keeping independence off balance. Second and seven. They end up putting the ball in the hands of Roland Myers and flag on the play here. Myers with some wheels, man. He got rolling. Flag right in the middle of the football field. Thrown by the umpire, so likely a hold. Yep, there we got it. Now these penalties, I mean, we've, we've seen quite a few of them, but Centennial has, I think they've scored their last six or so times with the football regardless of whatever penalty they picked up we saw him with a first and 24 i believe last drive and two plays later they were in the end zone after marking out the penalty the ball will be placed to the golden hawk 49 yard line so the ball comes back inside golden hawk territory second down and 16. Floats one up, lobs one up, and it is caught. Wow. What a beautiful floater. He just put it right where he knew Santiago would run to. And Santiago took a big hit there and probably had a little contact even before he caught the ball. But, um, you know, I, I just love how they move him around, and it makes it so difficult for a defense to plan for that and then to double team him for that reason because you don't know if he's going to be the widest guy on the right or the third guy in like he is right now if he's going to be on the line of scrimmage or off the line of scrimmage first and ten copas fires finds myers myers had one call back earlier but this one's not going to be and he gets it inside the ten it'll be first and goal and you see that i mean Boy, his ability after the catch is something that you're going to have to uh, work with. Uh, just a sophomore, too. So, Coach Starrett, I mean, again, Santiago's just a junior. He's going to have these guys coming back. His uh, quarterback is just a junior, I believe. It's what he talked to me a little bit about before the beginning of the game and just, you know, encyclopedic memory and just going through things. Myers again with a stall. And he Myers gets thrown down tackle, close to the five-yard line. And in comes Rubel. Out comes Myers. Yes, yes. The fact that Centennial has got such depth that they don't have to play these guys, other than the Santiago, both ways, really is a testament to, to their program. And same with their offensive linemen. They've got huge guys on the offensive line, and they've got really skilled, pretty big guys on the defensive line, and they don't go both ways. Well, Richie's done a great job, hadn't he? Yes, he has. A great hire, great guy. He was the freshman quarterback for one of the guys in my wedding. And it is a touchdown to Forbes. Number five, Braden Ripple. Wait, how many touchdown passes is that? A penalty on the Tonight play. Tonight for Adam Corpus. Oh, apologies. That was Rubel. I thought it was a six. It's a number five. So, Braden Rubel with the touchdown. Flag afterwards. And they roughed, they roughed up Corpus at the end of the play. That'll be declined. It'll be taken 
off on the kickoff. So we're likely to see a running clock in the fourth quarter with the 40-point the lead. Here, Centennial looks extremely impressive. You know, Liberty's been the top dog in town here for the last five or so years. Blocked. The one, the one weakness to the Centennial program is that, that field goal unit there. Um, just their, their timing seems a little bit off. We've seen him miss two, and now one get blocked. After this PAT, once again, Golden Lock 54, Falcons 14. Reminder fans, at the end of the game tonight, no one is allowed on 40 the 40-point game, as Coach After mentioned. Game, no one is allowed on the field. Coach, let's talk for a second about how you're doing at Del Oro. Brand new program, brand new school. How's things like going a, a week from a week from when we talked last week? Yeah, well, we had a bye this week, so we still haven't been scored on. Um, we're, we are 2-0. and oh. We head to Hawthorne down in L.A. next week. Uh, so a chance to get our kids on a charter bus and go down and play in L.A. school, which will be a new experience for them. Um, you know, got a good group of kids, got a good group of coaches that I really enjoy coaching with over there and uh, excited about the progress we're making. Had a quick brief chat with the athletic director at South High School on Tuesday, and I said, Dante, I have no skin in this game, but because of my good buddy Rich that calls the games, I want to thank you for everything you guys did to allow these guys to, to work out over there and yeah. to be a big part over that. And he goes, hey, look, just give Coach Cornerford the laundry bill, will you? Uh -huh. Just give him the laundry bill. Well, Kerry Mills over there has been phenomenal. He's the head coach at, at South High. Very gracious, letting us use everything from step-over bags to, you know, helmet, skull caps, and things like that. So can't say... Thank you enough to the South High Spartans and everybody involved there for helping us out. Estrada, kind of a one-step boot. For those of you that are, know about a new high school but didn't really know about the specifics of it, Del Oro on the southeast side, it's a, a hop, skip, and a jump from Golden Valley. And Coach Cornford, our guy here that's been interwoven into so much of the football lore over the last couple of decades here in Kern County with West High School and Ridgeview and Frontier and he joined us for a few years on a regular basis in the Kern High Network. He's back with us now for whenever, whenever Friday nights we can get him, we want him. Um, now the man tapped to start the Del Oro football program. Exciting stuff. Prince Ellis on a first down. Steps up out of the pocket and gets Ellis knocked down at about the 22-yard line. Boy, he does have that little burst, man, when he puts his foot in the ground. You can see it there. And, and again, he's he's not at 100%. Bringing Diego Hernandez back in, probably using him as a slot receiver. They've handed him the ball in the past. Again, Diego is the track star on this unit. Look for... Uh, a little more action from Anthony Rico, who has done really good things with the ball every time he's touched it. All right. be the end of the third end quarter. of the third quarter. Well, it's a 40-point lead, so when we come back, we may be on three, Falcons, a running clock. We'll Golden let you know when we get back. Kern High Network, right after this. We all come from different backgrounds and practice different traditions, but we belong to one humanity. At Valley Strong Credit Union, we care deeply about the communities where we live and serve. That's why over the past 80 years, we've donated and invested millions of dollars into various partnerships, nonprofits, and businesses in Kern County. And as we continue to grow, we remain rooted here in our community. Valley Strong, grow your possibilities. Yes, sir. 
Welcome back, everybody. Fourth quarter. They've started the clock already. And that's a nice pass from Ellis to Raul. Nice. Yeah, Prince Ellis has, has really thrown the ball well and directed the offense. I, I think he's the guy. I know that there was, a, you know, they were kind of 50 50, and they didn't think that Prince was going to play tonight due to uh, a little bit of the ankle. He's been playing corner all night, though. So. But uh, he certainly Remember, moved this fans, offense no pretty well. On the field or fans on the field after the game. And held on to the football. At the Arvin game, the premier lighting lights out player of the game is Elias Roman. Elias Roman, defensive line, they dominated against Kern Valley. Oh, drop ball, really nice pass Foul's again, pass put right in the hands of Raul. Ellis has a really nice quick release. Second down and sure he does. He's, he's not real big, but he spins that ball right out of his left hand very quickly. And um, again, that one right on target too. So if you don't know, if a team is up by 35 points in the fourth quarter, the clock runs. So anything but a timeout, essentially, and it, and it will keep running. So this fourth quarter will go by pretty quickly. Oh. Ellis Heath slips down. Glad he's all right. I hope he's all right. Uh, he's back to the line of scrimmage for Paul being tackled by number three, Chase Kasube. It'll be third and long for the, the Falcons. Well, Rich, I look at the weather. I was giving this a little peek here before the game started. And, you know, tomorrow and sun, tomorrow's 104, Sunday, then, it, you know, it goes 9, 109, 110, 112, 109, 106. And then next Friday's 104, and then the bottom drops out. It starts to get down to 95 and below. So Thank God. I think we may be in a deal where we're ultimately in the mid-September range. We'll start getting back to the 730 kickoffs. Headed for number one. Well, now we've already planned on next week when it's supposed to be so hot. Now, we're playing it in L.A., so that that shouldn't be a problem. But just even practicing next week is going to be an issue for most of the teams in town with as hot as it potentially could be. Tuesday, September 6, 112. Yuck. How do you like them apples? Yeah. I... Fourth and nine. Falcons gonna give it a give it a go here. Ball's on the ground, had to pick it up. Ellis is in trouble. Lobs one out, throws one out, and it is incomplete. So it'll be number one, Prince Ellis with pass. Change incomplete. of possession on downs. Ellis thank you to Centennial High School for hosting us tonight. Also, a very special thank you to our main man, Stan Green. Saw Stan earlier tonight. And also the Kern High School District superintendents and our sponsors at Valley Strong Credit Union for allowing us to put on events like this for our community. Thank you for the Centennial Administration Principal Ryan Coleman, the Assistant Principal of Instruction Kerry Palacios, the Assistant Principal of Administration Nicole Oliver, the Athletics Director, our good friend Tom Haskell, and the Activities Director Jane and Chapman. Congratulations. What a great night tonight for Centennial. Big, fun, active, festive crowd, and they've been treated to a 54-point output by their Golden Hawks, and the game's not over. Golden Hawks substituting liberally here, both uh, defensively and now offensively, as we can see some new faces in the game. Nice little burst there. His first carry of the game. Trying to get the number. Number 21, Angel Lozano on the carry. So that was Angel Lozano. Junior running back. Really hit the hole hard. And you love to see Number when these guys get their chance, you know, the rest of the team cheer them on and, and the way that they compete. Grant Shelley, the quarterback, number 14, a senior, also plays defensive back. Slip and his knee hit the 35-yard line, so that'll about wrap that up. Coach Cornford, your thoughts on the Premier Lighting Lights Out player of the game tonight? And I'll... As always, when it comes to coaches and your street credibility, you weigh in pretty heavily on this. Well, extremely impressed with Adam Kopis. You know, taking over for Levi Manning, who was an incredible quarterback for him. 
you know, anxious to see how he did. He came in with great numbers, you know, over 600 yards passing in, in two games, uh, and then threw five, six touchdown passes tonight. But yet I think, you know, Jackson Santiago uh, has really been a man amongst boys, and he's been the recipient of three or four of those touchdown passes. So I, I would be leading towards Jackson. Very good input. I'll factor that in. Thank you. Dr. J. Give it some thought and get back to me on your thoughts on the premier lighting lights out player of the game. Just give me your thoughts. What's that? Number nine, he says. All right. Well, we all know that each of ours counts as one and yours counts as three. So ultimately, it comes down to you. You, hey, you and Julian have those halftime discussions of in-depth NFL, college football, NBA. You guys cover a broad spectrum of conversations. So how about this? Lozano did not get to the marker on a fourth and five. He's a speedy one, but didn't get there. Diaz. Falcons will take over on down. Nice job by the Falcons getting off the field there, getting their offense another chance. You know, a lot of Centeno's got some good depth on their sideline, and they don't they don't lose a ton when they get to their second string. We know we, we called Golden Valley last week, and their first string was very impressive. But uh, you know, they don't have the depth that uh, the Centennial program has. These, these guys, I mean, size wise, they up front they look just like the first stringers. Under five to go here. First and ten from the thirty. Ellis. Lobs one up. It's up for grabs and incomplete. And they do throw the flag. There was a couple of Golden Hawks, and I think that's more a byproduct of how the ball just kind of got stuck up there. <laughs> that, yeah, that ball thrown short. DB's got his back turned to it, and the receiver tries to slow down and gets run into. So, yeah, the strength of Ellis's game is obviously his feet and his short to intermediate game. That's two deep balls that we've seen him kind of float. Um, but a heck of a playmaker there that I think independents can really build around. A final Ridgeview 25, Stockdale 15. Good win for the Wolfpack. First and 10. Diego Hernandez back in at quarterback. And Fumble, and it goes right into the hands of a Golden Hawk. It fell, it popped up in the air, and went right into the hands of a Golden Hawk. And that's going to be Braden Abiquinas. Abiquinas. Tough game for the sophomore quarterback who, you know, he's, he's playing as hard as he possibly can, but just having a difficult time holding on to that football tonight. Well, you've got Coach Starrett, and he, you wonder the philosophy with 3-18 and counting. You want your players to play as hard as you can. If they get in the end zone, it's going to be a 60 spot. Yeah, I, I, and you do want them to play as hard as you can, but you probably keep the ball on the ground from uh, here on out. I would think so. But here's Lozano. You can't keep him out of the end zone, can you? Oh, well, that was a big hit at the end by Diego Hernandez. He let some of his frustration out. Um, so how about that? Well, about Another junior, as you mentioned, right? Lozano's a junior as well. Yeah, he really attacks the hole. Wow. You, you just see the, the effort level that he runs with and the intensity. And, you, you, again, you love to see that from a kid. And regardless of the score, you can't tell a kid not to play 100%. <laughs> <laughs> so, again, you, you love to see that when a backup running back gets his chance well, and really takes advantage of especially it. Especially a speedster coach. I mean, they, they, look, this is what I do. I run hard and I run fast, and I'm going over the end zone. So you have that power runner in Jackson well, McDonald. Once again on the carry up the middle. Works hard. Looks like he... And then you've got the speed low to the ground. Like Race the car the runner Good of down. Angel Lozano. So with two minutes to go here. Again, that clock continues to run. 
Down to a minute 50 to play. Lozano looks, hunts the goal line, looks for it, looks for it. The official falls down, hope he's okay, but he gets back up long enough to call a touchdown. All right, we're up to 60 points here. That pretty impressive drive for the Centennial number twos there. Again, yeah. talking about depth on this team, you know, and in a long season, you're going to need that, especially when you get into play. You know, the Centennial is in that SWYL River League, um, along with Garces and Liberty and Frontier. Let's see, Garces, Liberty, Frontier, Centennial, and Stockdale. All right, those those five teams make up that league. So a pretty, uh, probably the toughest league in town. I think probably without question. Before we go off the air, I want to just say that next Friday night we're going to have some specifics about the NFHS commentary that we had last week and how Kern High Network and M NFHS are going to be teaming together to have pretty much any game you want to watch available to you on Friday nights. And then as we get into the playoffs, we're going to be covering games for you. So we'll get specific with it next week. We didn't talk about it tonight. And with all of the facts that are going to come out, it's going to be exciting, exciting, well, fun news. And they go down on a knee. Looks like we're going to go with Jackson Santiago tonight as our premier lighting, lights out player of the game. Coach, your final thoughts on this game tonight? Well, we expected a, a closer matchup here. Uh, you know, those turnovers in the second quarter really affected independence. But this Centennial Ball Club is a machine. This is three good wins for them now. Um, you know, their, their first home game. And they're going to be a team to be reckoned with uh, for the league title and then uh, the section championship. Monday is Labor Day for all of you that work so very hard in your daily, weekly, monthly, and annual life. Have a great, great Monday of relaxation. Coach, have a nice time at the coast. Julian, whatever you're doing this weekend, have a great one. On behalf of everybody at Centennial High School and Independence, and on behalf of everyone at the Kern High Network, for Julian, for Rich, I'm Vance saying good night. God bless.